Some of you watch him. You are waiting for the problem to pass over. But even while it's pricking you, you have to keep pressing. Even while the weight is on your shoulders, you must go forth. Even while trials are hitting you and the storm is going on and it's chaotic, she's doing this and he's doing that and things are happening and I keep getting bad reports. Even while things are hitting you, the pressure of the world, the pressure of the weight, even while it's on your shoulders, God told this man to pick up your bed and walk. Welcome back to the Kingdom Rock Network. My name is Shekana Elder and we are back again with another lesson. All right, well tonight I got something very special for you guys. I pray that this word will bless you as much as it has blessed me. So let's just go ahead and dig right in. Tonight's subject, today's subject, wherever you're watching, now, later, whenever. Today's subject is push, push, press until something happens, press until something happens. Today I'd like to teach on movement. So first let's just start in the very beginning. What is movement? Movement is changing of physical location or position. Movement also means a change or development. So I want you to notice here that the word movement, movement includes a change. A change in posture, position, and mind. All right? Now, oftentimes, us the being people that we are in this fleshly body, being people, us being who we are, oftentimes when we hit hardships, when we face adversity, when we go through trials, circumstances, when things happen in our life, when we get unexpected news from the doctor, we didn't want to hear that, we get shocked and caught off guard. What we do is we hear those things, the trial, situation, the circumstance, and when we hear these things, when we face these things, what we do as people is, we begin to, to slow down. Oh, a trial. Oh, a circumstance. Oh, a shortage. Oh, bad news. And so when we hear these things, we begin to slow down. And we begin to not only slow down, but we slow down and eventually we stop. We stop. And I want you to understand something today. The problem isn't falling. But when you fall and never get back up, that's when the, pop, that's when the problem arises. You fall and you forget you still have a future. You fall and you forget that there's still hope. You fall and you stay in that place and you stay stuck. That, my friend, is when the problem arises. So I come here today to encourage somebody somewhere around the world to get up and go forth and push, press until something happens. Regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you see, you may be hitting, you may have hit rock bottom, you may be depressed. You may, you may, have, dealt, you may be dealing with a, a divorce. You may have broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. They may have broke your heart, hurt your feelings. You, you may only have $26.17 in your account until next pay period. You may have received a, a bad report from the doctor. You may be dealing with custody issues. You may have a job that's working your nerves right now and you're ready to quit. Your marriage may be shaky and you may feel a little discouraged, a lot discouraged. But I come here today again to encourage you to push, push, press until something happens. You can't stay in that ditch. You cannot see in the dark and you aren't accomplishing anything by complaining. We got to push. Amen. All right. So let's just go ahead and get right into the word of God. Tonight, I want to come from the book of John. So we're going to go ahead and just start, start reading. John 5, 4 through 9 I'm reading from the New King James Version, John 5, 4 through 9. So let's read. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there who had infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, and this is what he said, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, 
But while I'm coming, another man steps before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. So I just want to briefly, we're going to stay right here, but I want to briefly just break down each verse. So let's just start with verse four. Let me give you a little background story again. It's an angel that came down. When this angel comes down, the angel comes down, and it, it anoints the water. It puts healing in the water. It puts deliverance in the water. Whatever you need is in that water. So when the angel comes down and it does this, this little thing to the water, when it does this anointing to the water, that's when the water is ready for the person to get in and get what they need. Okay. Verse 5, let's acknowledge this here. Verse verse 5, it tells us this man had been sick for 38 years. Not two months, not for a weekend, not for two years, but for 38 years. Let's let's acknowledge that. This man has been in this condition, in this condition, for 38 years. Verse 6. Now this, verse 6, it says, Jesus already knew. It tells us that Jesus, he already knew. This wasn't something that caught God off guard. He didn't know what was going on. He wasn't not seeing what the man was going through. But Jesus knew within himself what condition the man was in and how long he was in that condition. Okay? And I want you to understand something. I want you to realize something here in verse 6. The first thing Jesus asked this man was, Jesus knows what's going on. He sees He clearly knows how long the man has been been in this condition. The first thing, the first question that God asked this man, he asked the man, he said, do you want to be made well? And some of you you may be saying, well, that's a silly question to ask. Of course, Jesus knows this man wants to be made well. Why would he ask such a crazy question? Of course, he's been sick for 38 years, and God knows this. He's been not well for 38 years. God knows this. So why would God ask such a silly question? Well, I want you to understand something, that Jesus asked this man this question to show us why he had been in that condition for so long. By his response, when the man responded, by his response, the man had shown that he was content with his condition. When Jesus asked the man, he asked him, do you want to be made well? The first thing this man said was, he didn't say, yes, Father, yes, God, heal me, deliver me. The first thing this man said was, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool. I don't have anyone to place me out of my pit and put me in the pool. I don't have anyone to to pick me up out of my problem and place me in the pool of healing. The man was in in a content circumstance. He was content in his condition. And he wanted to blame everybody else for his 38 years of suffering, for his 38 years of an agony, his 38 years not being well. So when God asked the man, the first thing the man said was, he didn't say, yes, Father, heal me. Yes, God, deliver me. The first thing he said was, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. I don't have anybody. There are some people who are content in their condition. Content. Content with living from check to check. Content with barely making it. Content with surviving, trying to hustle and grustle instead of thriving. They're content with platform without the power of God. They're content with praises from people. Oh, yes, likes and shares and comments. They're content with being like and getting the praises of people and not pleasing God. My question to you watching today, do you want to be made well? Do you want to get out of your circumstance? Do you want to become better? Do you want more? Now, I want to also highlight this here with the scripture. You lose momentum when you have lost in your mind. You lose momentum when you have lost in your mind. She kind of was momentum. Momentum is energy. It's drive. It's impulse. It's desire. It's passion. It's fire. Again, you lose momentum when you have lost in your mind. I want you to notice something here in this scripture. This man had been in this condition for 38 years, and he had accepted his condition. He accepted that no one was going to come and pick him up. He was fine with being right there in that bed, in that predicament, in that situation. He was okay. He accepted it. If somebody comes and pick me up, they'll put me in there, and so I'll be fine. He was content for 38 years in his condition. He accepted it. And I want you to understand something again. If you lose, when you lose momentum, when you lose momentum when you have lost in your mind. He had a made-up mind that I'm stuck here until somebody moves me. If you have accepted defeat, my friend, you're already defeated. If you have accepted sickness, you'll be sick. If you have accepted less, you'll have less. If you have accepted being broken, you'll be broken. 
If you have accepted being angry, you will be angry. Because when you accept something, you are agreeing to it, and it becomes who you are. It's in your mind now, and that's who you are. That's what the Word of God tells us. You must renew your mind. You must renew your mind. A new mindset opens new opportunities. A new mindset opens new doors. A new mindset opens, gives you a new direction. Just imagine this man that's been in this circumstance for 38 years. If this man would have had a different mindset, instead of waiting on people, he would have progressed a lot further. He would have eventually got his own strength up and made it to that pool, but he was depending on people. The man's response, again, was a complaint. He really wanted to get into that water, but he was waiting on somebody to pick him up out of his pit. Let's just take a look at verse 6. It says, The sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps before me. Now, I want you to understand something here. This man was waiting on someone to pick him up out of his pit, but he couldn't get anyone to do it for him. Some of you watching today, you're waiting on the wrong help. You are waiting on the wrong help. You're waiting on the likes. You're waiting on the shares. You're waiting on the support. You're waiting on people. If I can just get him to like me, if I can just get her to like me, if I can connect to him, if I can be a part of that clique, a part of that party, a part of that group, if I can just be connected with them, if I can just get them to like me and be cool with them, if, we could just, if I can just get with them, if I can just get over there with him, with her, if I can just get with them and be liked by them, and have them a part of me, have them pick me up, that's when I'll be able to move. My brother, my friend, my auntie, my uncle, my niece, my nephew, all those around watching, do not spend another day relying on an unreliable source. Don't be like this man for 38 years, waiting for someone to pick him up out of his pit, to place him in that pool. You got to get up. Something inside of you has to be willing. Something inside of you has to want it. That's why God asked the man, do you want to be made well? So again, let me ask those that are watching. Do you want to be made well? Do you, do you want victory? Do you want that situation to turn upside down? Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue reading. Verse 8, it tells us, this is Jesus replying to the man. Jesus says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now, I want you to notice something here. Jesus, he never laid hands on the man. He never got his oil and threw it on the man. He never put a pinky on the man. He just spoke a word. He just spoke a word. The man was waiting to get into the water. Watch this. When all he needed was a word from Jesus. The man was waiting to get into this pool, this water, when all he needed was just a word from Jesus. For those that are watching, this is a word from Jesus for you. Rise, get up, pick up the problem, and walk. And another thing, some people, some of you that are watching, you're waiting for the problem to pass over. As this man was in the pool, if I can just get out of this state, I'm going to wait for the situation to pass over, and eventually I'll get better. Some of you watching, you are waiting for the problem to pass over, but even while it's pricking you, you have to keep pressing. Even while the weight is on your shoulders, you must go forth. Even while trials are hitting you and the storm is going on and it's chaotic, she's doing this and he's doing that and things are happening and I keep getting bad reports. Even while things are hitting you, the pressure of the world, the pressure of the weights, even while it's on your shoulders, God told this man to pick up your bed and walk. God, why would you have this man pick up his bed and walk? What's, what's the point of that? I want you to understand something. This man had lost his strength setting still. He sat in this pool, he, excuse me, he sat in this bed for 38 years. This man had lost, I mean, a lot of strength for 38 years. 38 years being still. 38 years doing nothing. 38 years waiting for somebody to pick him up, pick his body up, and place him in the pool. 38 years of losing strength. I want you to understand something for those that are watching. As long as you sit still, as long as you stay stuck, as long as you remain content in your condition, you will not progress forward. You are losing strength. You are losing a press. You are losing momentum. You are losing the fire. You are losing the flame. You have to get up and awaken that thing inside of you again. Amen? So the question I want to ask again, why would God ask this man to pick up his bed and walk? Again, the man, he sat there for 38 years, and he lost his strength sitting in his situation. Some of you are losing your strength sitting in your situation. 
You're waiting for the sun to come out and you're waiting for the right time, the right people. You're waiting for when you should do it, when, when it should happen. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And you're sitting in your situation and you're losing strength. Don't be like this man that waited 38 years. Don't, don't let this be your story. He sit in his situation and he was sitting there losing his strength. But I want you to understand something, that Jesus wanted him to pick up that bed because that bed was a weight. Not W-A-I-T, but it was a weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. It was a weight. And once you understand one thing about weight, weight, it gives you strength. For those that are work out, those that know about gym, those that know about fitness, one thing about weight, yes, that weight is heavy. Yes, that weight is burdenful. Yes, that weight is, is holding me down. But one thing about it, the end result, if you can just push, you're getting stronger. Push, you're getting bigger. Push, you're pressing through. Push, you're gaining your strength again. So God told the man to pick up that bed and walk. Bring the problem with you. Bring the situation with you and walk because this pain that you're going through, this hurt that you're going through, this agony that you're going through, the situation that you're going through, this bed, this it, whatever you're going through, is producing something inside of you, and that's producing strength. The pain is producing strength. The pain is producing power. The pain is producing something great inside of you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So pick up your bed and walk. Don't wait for it to pass over. Well, once this is over with, once I get past this, I'm going to be able to do this. No, do it now. Do it right now in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. And as we come to an end, let's look at verse 9. It reads, immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and he walked. It didn't say it took God five years, two months, 15 minutes, even a second. It said immediately, immediately meaning suddenly, meaning instant, the man was made well. He took up his bed. He took up his weight that was going to give him strength. He took it up and he walked. He walked. The same man that was in his predicament, in his condition for 38 years, when God spoke a word to this man, he did what God said. He rose, picked up that bed, and he walked. He walked. Again, for those that are watching all over around the world, get up and walk. Get up and move. You cannot stay stuck in your situation because you're losing strength while you're sitting there while you're crying, while you're waiting for something great to happen, while you're waiting for your moment, God is saying, get up and walk. Yes, I understand it hurts. Yes, I understand you're going through your own thing, and I may not understand this the same way that you understand, but one thing that I do know is Jesus will pull you out. Pick up your bed and walk. You're going to lose your strength as long as you sit there crying. He hurt my heart. She broke my heart. How could he do that? How would she do that? How can they do this to me? As long as you sit there and, and play this, stay in this pit and have a pity party, you're losing your strength. You're not going to win in this condition. You got to pick yourself up and walk. So for my ladies that are watching, get up, wash your face. Men, get up, wash your face, brush your teeth. Get the little crust out your eyes. Clean your ears out. Get some Q-tips. Clean them ears out. Fluff your hair out a little bit. Get up and walk. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let this be your story like it was this man for 38 years. Wait for somebody to pick him up out of his pit. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. And don't wait for someone to remove the problem or something to happen to remove the problem. Sometimes the problem is going to stay present because God wants something great to happen inside of you. And he's not going to remove the problem until you change. He's waiting for you to change. Change your perspective. You may not understand what's going on, but while you're going through it, still find the joy. Still find the joy. Thank you, Jesus. And don't wait for the predicament to change. Don't wait for it to change. You change. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is changing something inside of you. This man who was once in this condition for 38 years, God changed this man. His old nature has passed away. And behold, he was a new man. And he rose up and he walked. So again, for those watching all around the world, pick up yourself. Pick up the situation. Pick up what you're going through. Pick yourself up. 
and walk. Amen? Press. Push until something happens. Press until something happens. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go ahead and get to a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for this day you have made. I thank you, Lord God, for your word, for your word is truth, and it cannot return void. I thank you that you are a promise keeper, that you are a light in the darkness, that you are the peace that surpasses every storm, that you are the one that we need. Father God, you are Alpha, you are Omega, you are the beginning, you are the end. God, you come before all things, and in you, all things are held together. So Father God, us knowing who you are, allow us to run to you, Jesus. Allow us to, to, to let these weights go, Lord God, and these circumstances and waiting on things to happen. Allow us, Lord God, to run to you, Lord God. God, for you are the source of life. You are the peace. You are our strength. And all we need can be found in you. For you are everything, and everything we need can be found in you. I thank you for your word tonight that is truth, Lord God. I thank you for your word that came forth, Lord God. Allow us, Lord God, not to be hearers only, but doers of it as well, Holy Spirit. And God, create us a clean heart. For those, Lord God, that are broken, that are hurt, Lord God, that are weak in their bodies, Lord God, that has lost their strength, I speak supernatural strength over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you have sat in your pit for too long, God is saying it's time to get up, to arise again, to press towards the mark, to move up, to shake the shackles off in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to encourage someone today through the Holy Spirit speaking to rise up, get up, take up your bed, take up your situation, pick up your problem, and press towards the mark. We thank you for your word, Jesus. We thank you that it's real that is true, and that what you say, it must come to pass. So God, we believe that we are victorious. We believe that we have overcome. We believe, Lord God, that all things are working out in our good, Lord God, for we, that, for we love you, and we know that your word says when we love you, it's gonna work out for our good, Lord God. So what the enemy meant for evil, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are turned around for our good. I thank you, Jesus, for who you are, for what you've done, and for what you're doing. Continue to breathe on us, revive us, and strengthen us and allow us, Lord God, to press towards the mark and not grow weary in our well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And we just thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's all that I have for you tonight. I pray that this war has blessed you as much as it has blessed me. Remember to press towards the mark to keep moving do not stay stuck in your circumstance do not stay stuck in your situation because when you stay still you're losing strength don't lose your strength my sister don't lose your strength my brother you're gonna make it out but you got to be willing first so again the question that arises do you want to be made well all right that's all that i have for y'all and i'll see you next time on the kingdom rock network